Hi, sweeties. How are you doing? Welcome to Naya Same. If this is your first time of coming across this channel, sweetheart, kindly smash the subscribe button, turn on the notification so you get notified each time I upload. And please give this video a thumb up. I appreciate you all and I want to say a very big thank you to every one of you for always coming back to watch my videos and subscribing. You all are the real MVP. So today, I actually saw something on TikTok. This thing just popped on my TikTok and I decided to like check it, check it out. And it's actually about a rancher. Ranchers being forced out 1,000 acre ranch in Colorado, right? When I saw this, I decided to make more research on how lands were stolen from black Americans. And I found out that this has like, it is not a thing of today. It's been happening. I mean, as a, even, okay, like back then, 90, 60 something, 70 something, 80 something, and it is still happening presently. I mean, it is happening presently. And then some people are going to tell you, why are you like talking about history? Why are you bringing up something that happened back then? It is still happening. And why even if, why won't I talk about it? Is it not happening? It is happening. Anyways, let's get into this video and then come back to talk about it. All right. Hi everybody, I want to share with you about what's happening to two ranchers in Colorado. Courtney and Nicole Mallory own a thousand acres in El Paso County, Colorado. And despite Nicole being a um, U.S. military veteran who waves her um, military flag on their ranch and being a part of the church community as well as feeding the residents in El Paso from their food, from their ranch, they are being terrorized by locals who want their land. As seen here in the footage, locals have been jumping the fence. They have slaughtered their livestock, poisoned their dog, and has driven by their house waving guns. Nicole was ran off the road when she was coming back from church. Courtney states that there was a woman that pulled up in his driveway and said that she was supposed to own the land and made threats about um, unaliving their dog. What's worse is that the local sheriff isn't doing anything about it and is being investigated now for being a part of this terrorism. And they have actually issued a warrant for Courtney and Nicole because of their complaints against the local community and the sheriff. So they're actually facing criminal charges for reporting everything that's been happening on their land. So here's my thoughts. They told us to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. They told us to stop using the race card because you know racism doesn't exist anymore. You know, one of the largest lawsuits that ever happened in the United States was against the USDA for discriminating against black farmers. We know that black farmers make up a very low percent. I think it's less than 2% of all farmers today. What racism does, it puts fear in you. And that's exactly what they're trying to do to Courtney and his wife. His address has been leaked in a local Facebook group to where now he's in a witness, like a witness protection program. And this sends shockwaves out. So now so many other African-Americans are saying, you know what? I don't want to farm. I'm scared to go into these areas, but we can't let fear stop us. Here's the call to action. There's a protest that's going to happen at the Denver Capitol coming up. Pause to read in support of the Karen Act, as well as numbers to call. All right. <clears throat> you know what? I am going to put this, uh, because I saw this on TikTok, I am going to put her handle 
uh, in the description box for those that want to follow up with this story on TikTok. If you if you can help in any way, that will absolutely be amazing. But now let's talk about it. Uh, they said the sheriff is also part of the people terrorizing the owner of the land. And it dawns on me like that these people really know what they are doing. And they are extremists, you know? When they want to do something, they go to the extreme to like get what they want or do what they want. And I keep asking all the time, do they really have conscience? Because how do you wake up? How do you wake up to take something that is not yours? How do you wake up to take something that does not belong to you? It is called, you are a thief. Yeah, you are a thief if you go around stealing something that is not yours. And the worst part is that, they, they, look at her livestock and all that, the dogs were poisoned. And why are local news not carrying this? Why is this not on news? I mean, some people are really very wicked. Yes, some people are very wicked. Because if you can think of taking away someone's thing forcefully, and some of them are Christians, some of them go to church. Some of them call God. It's really amazing. Really. It's really amazing. And you know what I want to say? I, I just want to say this. Because like they are trying to put fear on her. And she is not into hiding. Because like you know. Her life is in danger. When they want to come. When they want to attack. They really want to put a lot of fear in you. But the truth is that how long are you going to be scared? How long are you going to keep hiding from them? The earlier, the better. They have taken more than enough. And enough is enough. You can't keep stealing from innocent people and think you are going to be okay. You will not be okay. Because you might wake up and hear that thunder struck some people. Yeah, it does happen. Anyways, let's get into this video and see what other people are saying about this. All right? So here we go. This black man's land was stolen and turned into the business administration building at the University of Alabama Huntsville. And the well he had in his backyard that provided everyone in the area with fresh water is now a parking lot. The family of Willie Jones wants justice and they want their land back. But the university wants to offer an apology and a plaque. But that ain't enough. Let's talk about it. In the 1950s, the land that Willie Jones had contained the house and the well. He was graciously known in his community for providing fresh water for his neighbors. Around that time, the city of Huntsville traced a clean water source to Willie's home, and they wanted it. So in 1958, the city of Huntsville offered Willie $900 for the portion of land that included the well. That's only about $9,000 today. So, of course, Willie was like, nah, you can't have my land. So, in typical white supremacist fashion, they condemned the land and considered it uninhabitable and unsafe. Since he wasn't able to live in the house at that moment and still needed to provide for his family, Willie began sharecropping at various homes in the area. One particular place was described as a house in the woods. And while they lived in these homes, they never received any mail from the city. But at the same time, the city was actively attempting to confiscate the land that Willie still owned. Now that land is this and this right here too. So Willie Jones's descendants need justice. So share this, sign the petition, and stay tuned for part two. You right as fuck. They sure fucking did. They stole it from the Freedmen's Bureau who was not given a dime of any bit of the money to basically give reparations back to Africans who were given a shit ton of land. Um, that's the reason why 40 Acres and a Mule came through 
um, the man who led the Freedmen's Bureau basically was going to give and allot out this land to former and fleet slaves. Um, but after they got done doing this, a lot of black farmers actually became really fucking successful growing watermelon, cotton, and tobacco, but mostly different fruits and vegetables. And the white people didn't like that because now the black people were becoming rich black people. So Andrew Jackson, the poor white man who wanted the poor white men to go ahead and be the cream of the crop in the country, decided to take that land from the rich black people who mind you were just fucking enslaved mind you and then give it to poor whites because it was only fucking fair to who to who to who so one more note about the formation of cops <clears throat> so you know how like they used all these people to like screw with the voting and to like enact violence upon black people and to enforce black codes and vagrancy statutes and all of that really crappy racist crap it worked. And we know this because the Compromise of 1877, which was never an actual real thing, it was just a backdoor deal by our government at that time, is where all of the governors and senators got together. Yeah, promises are always broken. Anyways, let's get into the next one and then come back to talk about it. To give all the land back to the southern landowners and to let the South reestablish its power unto itself, therefore protecting racism in order to feed American greed and capitalism. Historically, if we're talking about African Americans, despite this incredible acquisition of land after the Civil War. Most of that property was not considered prime real estate. For example, Hilton Head, South Carolina. Until 1950, Hilton Head was remote. There wasn't a bridge from the South Carolina mainland out to Hilton Head Island, and the island was owned by majority African-Americans. Right. What does South Carolina do? They build a bridge. Real estate developers realize, oh, there's a great economic opportunity. And they have the visions of what has become Hilton Head. The indigo, rice, and long staple. We should have got 40 acres and a mule when we gained freedom in 1865, but we didn't. Regardless, though, many of us found a way to make it happen, because that's what we do. James Marshall, for example, bought nearly 200 acres of land from the Arkansas government in the 1920s along the Arkansas River. He was such a good dude that he decided to pass that land down to his caretaker and his family. A man named Roosevelt died when he passed away in 2005. But then something happened. Roosevelt died, paid off all the taxes. He had all his paperwork in order. But when he went to retrieve the land in 2005, he was met with opposition. When Roosevelt went to access his land in 2005, he was met by a lumber company named Anderson Tilly that said, nah, it's our land and we'll have you arrested if you don't leave. They went to court over this and the lumber company won even though Dye had his paperwork in order. But we gonna get it back. Follow where's my land to see how. You guys, this story is super disturbing. This is about a family in... Colorado, El Paso County, Colorado, a black family, farmers, ranchers, um, uh, military that are trying to be pushed off their thousand acres because racist white people don't want them on that land. They're upset that they own that land and that they are poisoning. This is longer than, uh, this, this video is uh, very long and I can't play all of them because like, you know, time and all that. And you all might know Delta is, I think Delta Farm or something like that, like, you know, I read about it and they ended up taking the land away from them. Yeah. And what I am asking is this, you all have been saying that black people are lazy Black people are not the standard. Why are you stealing from the people you personally say you are better off? Yes, you are stealing from someone you said you are better off. 
And then, who is now the king? <laughs> who is the king right here? Because if all you all can think of is like, look up for like, you know, black people that are doing great, like have great farms, doing well for themselves. All you all look for is a way to like, you know, kill and like remove the person, take away somebody's thing. Because that is because like, it's more like a, a trend, you know? You watch the person grow the farm and all that, the land, and then <laughs> you wanna take away somebody's land. It is called stealing, in case you do not know. And I really do hope that government, I mean, this gets to uh like this gets covered uh in the stage like I don't know, but I just help, hope that. They don't like you know the first video they don't give up i hope they don't like uh uh say that i am scared i don't want anything because when you put fear in yourself trust me you cannot do it but gather people gather people and march to the farm let it be covered let it be known that your land is being taken away from the locals let me know when stealing is when when is stealing be, stealing become a uh, legal, or is it because it's been done by a white person? It is legal, but if a black person do the same thing, it is illegal, right? You all know what is good from bad, and if you think what you are doing is right, kudos to you. You and your conscience will fight it but then i feel like your conscience are you aren't working so how are you going to know if what you are doing is right or wrong anyways this is where i am gonna call it a day see you all in my next video and like i said before please march to her tiktok for those that can help if you are in colorado and you can help speak up you can help write if you have a platform please use your platform so they don't take her ranch away from her yeah See you all. Bye for now.